what is the diet for mental illness to prevent as well as for curing my name is dr nimal gamage i'm internal medicine cosmetic surgery and cardiology expert as well as a nutrition specialist and today i like to talk about this important subject because mental illness is becoming more common as people are eating a uh, really bad diet the childhood obesity in the united states currently has tripled since the 1970s and you know today about 60% of the american children are going to be obese by the age of 35 in 2007 to 2008 33.7% that's like one third of the american adults were obese and 5.7% were severely obese and by 2015 to 16 just in about 8 years that number has risen to about 40% being obese and 8% being severely obese so what is happening in the west and in america is now mirrored in brazil china india and even in the poorest countries in africa For example, in Mexico, opening straight borders in the 1980s resulting in a complete transformation of the food environment from traditional diets to western. In industrialized foods, obesity rates rose from 7% in 1980 to more than 30% today. Now we know in Mexico, type 2 diabetes, which is a result of bad diet, is accounting for roughly 80,000 deaths every year. The public health experts call this kind of environment obesogenic environment, environment which is conducive for obesity. And the food products uh, are the cheapest options for eating and most accessible, socially acceptable and heavily advertised. So these are the bad foods we are talking about. Poor diet is also leading risk factor for early death in developed countries and worldwide it's number 2 cause of death depression is one of the top 5 leading causes of disability across the planet the loss of pleasure from even happy events or circumstances is one of the key symptoms of depression officially we call it anhedonia another key symptom uh, for you to diagnose a person is having depression is a combination of anhedonia or in its own a depressed mood and there are other symptoms persistent fatigue difficulty in concentrating and making decisions unwarranted feelings of guilt and worthlessness appetite problems uh, usually loss of appetite sleep disturbances slowness or agitation in bodily movements and the thoughts of death or suicidal ideations in the state of victoria which is a place in australia a very recent report uh, was indicating that presentations to emergency departments with children up to 18 years old for extreme mental distress and self harm had increased by roughly 50% over the past 10 years so and there's more and more evidence pointing to lifestyle behaviors such as diet exercise and smoking as key factors influencing the risk of poor brain health not just depression the other mental illness as well there was a us researcher called captain joe hibel and he was presenting studies as late in the late 1990s and early 2000s looking at the consumption of seafood in various countries and linking it to the rate of depression and bipolar disorders what he what his study showed was that people who eat more seafood usually have less mental disorders so obviously eating more seafood is better for your brain the trans fats which we know cause heart disease also have a very clear link with depression and more people eat trans fats more there are incidence of depression and we know today 
things like muffins, donuts, croissants, biscuits are freely available in the supermarkets. A lot of people consume them without thinking about the content of trans fat in them and thereby increasing their risk of depression as well as heart disease. The average age of anxiety was only 6 years old in most of these studies. A German study reported that if you take more sweets, you get more emotional symptoms in children compared to a low intake. So sugar is one of the worst things you can take for your brain function. Even children who eat sugar have high levels of anxiety. And this is true for adults as well. And also we know that the babies who are born with low birth, birth weight were exposed to malnutrition during the pregnancy have higher risk of heart disease, diabetes, hypertension and stroke when they are adults. Uh, in the Netherlands they did a large study which was called Generation R where we examined the mother's diets and children's mental status in about 3000 Dutch mother-child pairs. This showed that the diet higher in vegetables, fruits and fish during pregnancy was associated with better emotional health. And one of the key areas of new research is the relationship between the gut microbiome which is the bacteria in the gut and the mental state. And later on in another lecture I will discuss that in detail. What is confirmation bias? Confirmation bias is unconsciously we usually pay more attention to or believe the information or advice that confirms our prior expectations or beliefs. So once we have got a wrong belief in our head, it's very hard to get rid of it because we'll only believe new things which confirm with that belief. In Dutch hunger, winter, hunger winter studies, uh, there was also a clear relationship found between mental disorders such as autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit disorder, psychiatric disorders as well as schizophrenia and malnutrition. And usually when you get these kind of problems, there had been a problem during the child's brain during development. So it could be a combination of events or exposure in early life uh, of and also of their genetic makeup. There's even evidence that parents' health, as uh, the dad's as well as mother's health before pregnancy, may play a role in these disorders. So before you become pregnant, it's very important that you stay on a good diet and stay in a healthy lifestyle, keep a healthy lifestyle for a period of few years. Longer the better. So mothers with diabetes are twice as likely to have a child with development delays and the mother, mothers with me metabolic disorder uh, metabolic disorder can be just obesity, hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, large amount of abdominal fat, are likely to have children with impairment in visual reception, motor skills, receptive and expressive language, as well as adaptive communication and socialization skills. Again, the metabolic syndrome in the mother is caused by bad diet. There's another large study with 12,000 children from Sweden, Finland and Denmark. They found that children of the mothers who are overweight or obese before pregnancy, who are overweight to start with and then gain too much weight during their pregnancy, were more likely to have symptoms of ADHD than the peers of healthy weight. So, something we know is in adolescence, uh, there's a higher signaling of reward systems in the brain and therefore they have higher chance of reward seeking behaviors and that means addictive behaviors such as eating sugar, carbohydrates as well as other addictive behaviors. That's why we see a lot of teen teenagers with pro problems of addiction. Sometimes they tend to get less and less as they get older. Now we know if you are eating junk food, 
you might have problems with the brain function even before you start to gain weight and another thing we know is the mothers with type 2 diabetes are more likely to have children who go on to develop schizophrenia and large studies in Finland, United States and Japan have shown that mothers who are obese before or during pregnancy are two to three times more likely to have schizophrenia uh, in their children. So again, where we have to focus on nutrition during the pregnancy and make sure the mothers don't get obese and they don't eat bad food. And there are other things which affect schizophrenia such as birth complications thing during emergency cesarean sections, placental abruption which is separation of the placenta from the womb before birth and perinatal asphyxia. All these problems cause increased schizophrenia in children. And of course these are also more common with mothers with metabolic syndrome especially obesity. So it's very important that you come to the right weight for your height before you contemplate becoming pregnant and stay on a good diet during the pregnancy. Again, there are other things which can increase the risk of schizophrenia such as if you get influenza, rubella, polio, measles, herpes simplex or pneumonia, even tonsillitis during pregnancy you can have higher risk of schizophrenia in the child. Now we have a large amount of reports coming up which show that ketogenic diet may be helpful for some people with schizophrenia. Ketogenic diet is basically avoiding carbohydrates of refined carbohydrates, basically the sugars and the starch, meat products, rice and Increasing the complex carbohydrates which comes with vegetables, mushrooms, onions, cabbage, etc. for your diet, and also increasing things like coconut oil, olive oil, or butter to provide more fat in the diet, and that's how you get a ketogenic diet. We also know today that if you have even a slight risk of high range of normal blood glucose, your blood glucose may be longer but if it is at higher range like from 90 to 120 you have higher risk of dementia. So sugar definitely damages the brain and we know this is the reason for this is basically when you have to burn sugar to create energy inside the cells like in your mitochondria it creates more damage to the mitochondria because you get more free radical production whereas if you are burning ketone bodies which is derived from fat your mitochondria works the best with the least amount of damage from this free radical formation so that is why it's important to notice that high blood glucose even in the normal range can really uh, relate to or lead to atrophy of the key regions of the brain which are important for aging and neurodegenerative processes especially the hippocampus and amygdala uh, this was found in all the Australians also long chain omega-3 fatty acids are found below in people who have depression and inflammation of the brain is what causes depression you know because antidepressants also work by uh, dampening down the inflammation also the stress is also important to prevent mental illness when you have stress you produce less BDNF which is brain derived neurotrophic factor also exercise is important exercise improves BDNF so it helps in the brain function. So obese people, even children who are obese, have deficits in memory, learning, exercise functions compared to people who are at healthy weight. And 
Today we also know that certain bubble problems are caused by allergic reaction to certain kinds of yeast and this is usually caused by the bad diet which causes decreased amounts of good bacteria in the gut and increased amounts of bad bacteria. In the intest uh, intestine, especially the large intestines, when you eat complex carbohydrates like from vegetables, mushrooms, your bacteria produce short chain fatty acids. They are like acetates, butyrates, and propionate. And they have a multitude of actions in the body as well as in the brain. And they do virtually interact with every cell in the body. Butyrate is the one which is mostly studied and is known to reduce inflammation, oxidative stress and also maintain the health of intestinal mucus lining and when the intestinal mucus lining is not maintained and this is supposed to cause leaky gut where things which are not healthy for your body get absorbed through the intestinal lining and create all kinds of inflammation and problems you also know the bacteria in your large intestine produce key neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin and gamma amylobutyric acid which is called GABA. We also know more than 90% of the body's production of serotonin comes from the intestine. Of course, these neurotransmitters from the gut may not cross the blood-brain barrier but still these are important for your health. We also know that when you take uh, stools from a health person, mentally healthy person and transplant that to a person who is not health unhealthy or depressed, they are, you have found to have an effect to improve that depression. This is found in my studies as well. When you talk about breast milk, it is important to know that breast milk contains a lot of carbohydrates which are not absorbed by the intestine. They go direct to the large intestine and help the child to develop big feeder bacteria and other healthy bacteria. And people who have been breastfed have only half the risk of developing celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disorder. Even other autoimmune disorders such as multiple sclerosis, lupus, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease and type 1 diabetes are known to be rapidly increasing in the West and in developed countries because of the bad diet. And we know a baby's gut and the bacteria are also important for the developing brain. There are uh, mice which have been produced without any microbacteria or microbiota and they have been found to have profound changes in their brains and in their behavior. And their behaviors are similar to uh, autism spectrum disorder we find in humans as well as a host of problems such as reduced health on the blood, uh, brain barrier, reduced brain plasticity, very different stress response systems and differences in the neurotransmitter systems. The antibiotics which we know are sometimes life-saving but if a child receives this for uh, when they are in the infancy, I mean in the first 12 months, can have a very devastating impact on this bacteria in their guts. So we know there have been human studies which prove the leaky gut in people uh, are linked with clinical depression. And these people have a higher level of antibodies to bacteria in their blood than people without depression. That means gut is an important place for our mental health. There have been an animal study uh, regarding different dietary fat and for these studies it's, we need more evidence uh, but we know for sure omega 3 fatty acids found in seafoods and nuts uh, especially from seafood are healthy and improves your brain function. Artificial sugars such as saccharine, aspartame, and splenda are now shown in animal studies to reduce beneficial bacteria such as bifidobacteria and lactobacillus 
and also gluc or to the glucose regulation predisposing the people to take this to become obese. So solution is never artificial sugars or sweetness. Anything sweet can disrupt your hormone metabolism and cause problems. And there have been a sugar called trinose and this also causes uh, problems with the gut bacteria we call it uh, called that dysbiosis and also increases the risk of prostrainium difficile infections which is usually uh, which usually occurs with antibiotic usage and people who have depression also have high risk of heart disease obesity and metabolic syndrome because all these are caused by the same problem in the diet you also know the large food large companies in the food industry usually spend about 30 times more in advertisements for junk food than the government spend on healthy food advertising therefore we are bombarded with uh, advertisements tempting us to eat bad food throughout the day and this happens to children too and we also know that there are few studies where strict vegetarians and vegans are having more mental problems because they don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids and sometimes also because they eat more sugary stuff in the United States 99% of the beef comes from feedlots where cattle is raised in captivity and fed a diet of grains and this cattle when uh, the beef comes from this cattle that beef has more omega-6 fatty acids because of the grain diet so it's not healthy whereas sometimes in Australia the meat is grass-fed and the cows are grass-fed so the meat has is much more healthy uh, when we talk about the meat we have to talk about the A1 beta casein which is protein which came due to mutation and find and it's found in certain kind of meat uh, like uh, uh, black and white cows the Holstein cows also uh, we know that certain cows like Guernsey cows or bulls don't have this protein so we want to know where your milk and meat comes from before you can decide which is healthy and which is not healthy people with schizophrenia have also been have found to have high levels of antibodies to gluten containing food gluten is found in meat products wheat uh, and barley uh, and rye so this carbohydrates are absolutely not healthy for people with mental illness or people who do not don't want to get mental illness so that there are a lot of studies done on this so and usually when I talk to patients uh, a lot of people are already aware of these kind of things so gluten free diet is in getting popular but the problem is people go gluten free but eat sugar and other carbohydrates so they don't get into a better state of health they get worse so sometimes when you're on low carbohydrate diets like Atkins diet but you're not eating enough vegetables then again those women when they have babies they have a high risk of spina bifida malformations of the brain and skull and uh, we talk about tryptophan in Turkey for uh, sleeping but we have done large studies of nearly 30,000 people with, with did not find any association between consumption of food high in tryptophan and uh, the mood or suicide rates and if you are taking tryptophan supplements they do cause a lot of side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, drowsiness, light tetanus, headache and dry mouth, blurred vision and sedation also if you are taking a lot of uh, tryptophan might not get side effects but you might get uh, syndrome caused by too much of serotonin called serotonin syndrome and some people have 
read about these high levels of pyrrholes in urine causing schizophrenia, but this is a myth. Later studies could not prove this. So if you have a loved one or you uh, have problems with depression, anxiety, schizophrenia or other mental illness, want to find out the best treatment, the best diet, you can call us. Call me at 077-2300-454 because there's a lot of help available not only with the diet but also with food supplements because today's diet is deficient in the supplements because of the uh, ways of agriculture therefore we use uh, nine kind of supplements to improve your brain and to uh, and to replenish the def uh, deficient nutrients so these supplements can help you to recover from mental illness and occur mental illness much faster.